black and white, life and death, good and evil, two sides of a chess game, two forces of the universe, one magnificent, the other sinister. It is said that the devil plays for men's souls, so does Dr. Fu Manchu, Satan himself, evil incarnate. dispose of such a large amount of gold. Through the gold smuggling operation centered in Macau, the hottest trading post for gold in the world. $27 million worth a month pours in. Its entry legal due to the fact that Portugal did not sign the Bretton Woods Monetary Agreement, which tied most nations to a world price of $35 an ounce. Our next move was obvious. We contacted Lum Sen, Chief of Investigation for the Bureau of Internal Affairs in Macau. I'm John Petrie, Doctor of Medicine and attached to the Surgeon General staff. The young lady is Betty Leonard, my assistant. We were assigned to the case at Sir Dennis's request. We found that Lum Sen already had an undercover agent named Vicente working as one of the smugglers, and that Vicente had a plan to capture a man named Morgan, known to be captain of a ship engaged in smuggling gold out of Macau. This is the area we raid, Sir Dennis just off the Kowloon Highway. The shacks are up in these low hills. And you think Vicente can have this man Morgan there? Vicente has been a member of Morgan's crew aboard the sampan smuggling out the gold. This is the shack where they share the same living quarters. Vicente would not have sent word if he was not sure. But how sure can you be that Fu Manchu is the real power behind the gold theft and these smuggling operations? We cannot be. That is why my government is glad you came to Macau. You, better than any of us, know the workings of this man's mind, his aims, his ambitions, how he operates. Now, for the raid. I will ask you once more. How much does Lum Sen know? So, uh, you wish uh, to remain uh, silent? Uh, very well. Uh, but uh, since you have gone uh, to so much uh, trouble to find things out, I would not wish to disappoint you. Uh, yes, if uh, you were to report back to Lum Sen, uh, you could tell him it was Dr. Fu Manchu who stole the gold who controls the gold market, who runs the gauntlet of guns to deliver these uh, shipments into the hands of other nations willing to pay any price for its possession. Gold is God here in Macau. And the man who controls this God controls Asia. Yes, you could have told much to Lam Sen. And you can still tell much to him. Even the dead can deliver a message. Most unfortunate, Mr. Morgan discovered who you really were. I do not know which I despise most in this world, a traitor or a spy. anxious to cast your eyes upon my gold. So you shall.
Vicente. Fu Manchu. See the mark on his forehead? What happened here? Tell me, who are you? What's your name? Do you know him? No. We've got to get her to a hospital right away. Captain Alvarez, please call an ambulance. think? There's nothing wrong with her physically. I'd say she's been thrown into some form of psychic shock. A kind of, well, vocal blackout, no doubt, caused by what happened in that shack, whatever it was. And the very real shock of her possibly thinking that that dead man was the man in the photograph. When do you think she'll pull out of it? Well, these shock cases are unpredictable. Time, rest, quiet. There's no one particular therapy. Of course, I could use sodium pentothal, but I... Petri! If you could unlock her mind long enough to find out who she is, why she was there, who the man in the photograph is, right now she's our only link to Fu Manchu. And right now, narcosynthesis might be too risky for her. No, I'd rather wait a day or two. She may snap out of it by herself. Each day we delay helps Fu Manchu, Dr. Petrie. I know. I'm sorry. But this is a human being, a life. Isn't there anything specific you know about her? Only that she's probably an American. The label inside her shoes and in her clothes give the name of a store in Los Angeles, California. Otherwise, no positive identification, no papers, nothing. Hmm. Betty. Any special instructions, Doctor? No, just stay with her. If there's any change, you can call me at Lum Sen's office. I'll be there with Sir Dennis. Yes, Doctor. We wire photo the picture to Daniels in Washington for possible identification. Any word yet? No, nothing yet. Mm -hmm. When do you think you will hear? Well, I don't know. At what time? We should hear in about a couple of hours, I guess. Word has just reached me uh, that Dr. John Petrie arrived in Macau this morning. You had me worried for a minute. I thought the way you sent the giant running after me, something really went wrong. Well? What's the doctor here for? To pay her a house call? <laughs> Mr. Morgan, your friends may die laughing at your humor, uh, but I think I prefer just the reverse reaction. No harm meant. I didn't know you were touchy. I am very touchy, Mr. Morgan. I am especially touchy uh, because of what is at stake. But uh, perhaps you cannot see beyond the color of a few bars of gold. To each his own. It happens to be my favorite color. Very droll, Mr. Morgan. But unfortunately, Sir Dennis and Dr. Petrie do not share your point of view. They found a woman at Vicente's. A woman? Up at the shack? In a state of shock. She was unable to speak. She must have come there just after you brought Vicente's body back. She may have seen you, or perhaps not. A woman? Do they know who? I do not think so. But when she recovers, she will talk. And who knows what she will be able to say to them. And that is where you come in, Mr. Morgan. You will see to it that Dr. Petrie's patient will not recover. I'll smuggle your gold past Chinese customs. I'll take anything that floats past the nose of any British gunboat out there. I'll even dump a dead body where you want it. But sorry, I won't put one in that condition. Well, look, when I was a little boy, my mother always used to tell me it isn't nice to go around killing people. 
A noble woman, your mother, Mr. Morgan. But it would pain me to see you die for something you would not do. Poor Vicente. You understand? My husband's leave was canceled suddenly, and he got orders to rejoin his ship. He didn't know what his destination would be. I thought Korea. Well, I went with him up to San Francisco. He said goodbye there. It turned out to be a very long goodbye. And then one day, I received a letter from the Navy Department. It was brief and to the point. It is our painful duty to inform you that your husband has committed suicide. Well, I couldn't believe it. Philip wasn't the type to commit suicide. So I made further official inquiries. And? And I was told that nobody official ever sent me that letter. But officially, I was told that, that Philip went before a court-martial and was found guilty. Our marriage wasn't the kind that you write up in books. It was wrong from the start, I guess. But if Philip was dead, I had to know. If he was alive, I had to find that out, too. There were too many broken pieces in my life still laying around. I had to be swept up clean, once and for all. So I telephoned, I wrote letters. I went to see his shipmates, his friends, anybody. Anything I could think of to try to find out what really happened. Where he was. And then I ran into an old shipmate of his who'd seen him. And the trail ended here, at that shack. I went in. I saw the body lying there. And after that, I, I don't remember anything until I saw Philip's face staring down at me. I'd say your husband wrote you that first letter himself, Mrs. Judson. The truth is, he was court-martialed for black market activities during the Korean campaign. Oh, maybe he thought it best to let you think he died, and in that way go out of your life. But it, but it can't work that way. He isn't dead. No, he isn't. And further, we have every reason to believe that he's mixed up in something quite serious. Did he kill that man? We don't know. But your husband does know you're here now. And we have a feeling he's going to come back again. You mean you think he, he might come back and try to kill me? He's a desperate man, Mrs. Judson. Won't you please help us? He's our one link to what we must find out. He's my one link, too. And the woman found in the shack off Kowloon Highway is still in a state of shock and unable to speak. 
Police are withholding names of suspects for the time being. Uh, this woman must be silenced, Morgan. She was too closely guarded. As it was, I had trouble with the nurse. I will not accept failure a second time. Yeah, sure. You will be ready to sail tomorrow night with a shipment that will be met at a point along the coast of Indochina. I will tell you at what point, just before you leave. You give the orders. Tell them to get on with it. I've got to be loaded by sundown. I sail with the night tide. All will be done. to sail with the night tide, my lord. I could not race quickly enough to inform you. Perkins. Well, he's up in surgery, an emergency case. They asked me to take his place. American, aren't you? Mikhail, just one big happy melting pot. Well, she's all yours. Pretty and all that, but it's just like sitting here talking to yourself. Well, better pickings next time. But if she does open her mouth, you yell and yell fast. I remember. Phil. Phil, I knew you'd come back. I knew it. I've been lying here pretending I couldn't speak, counting the moments, knowing you'd find some way to come back to me. Phil, I, I've been hearing them say the most terrible things about you. That you're mixed up in something very bad. That you even killed a man. Did you, Phil? Well, did you? Anne, were they waiting for me to come back here? to walk into their arms? Are they waiting out there now? Yes. And listen to me. Don't ask me why I came here the first time. Make believe it never happened. This time it's different, though. I came back to take you with me, and Forget what I've been, all the things I've done. We'll start over. Begin a new life, find new happiness. I have enough gold aboard a boat in the harbor right now to buy half the world for you. And I want you. All this time, I never knew how much. I'll change, darling. I'll make up for everything. I'll go with you, Phil. I'll get dressed. I think I've got a way to get us out of here.
Well, this is the woman. Uh, thank you for bringing her to me. You have saved me so much trouble. I could never have gotten out of the hospital without her. A uh, very clever disguise. But uh, you are clever at uh, disguises. Like uh, loading gold into coal baskets. I had a tip they had our boat spotted. I figured there was nothing suspicious about a bunch of coolies loading coal on to a Chinese junk, so I figured I'd let you know in time. Did you also figure on letting me know you are sailing tonight? No. You cannot see beyond the color of gold. You heard me tell Vicente there are two kinds of people I despise most in this world. Spies and traitors. You are a greedy traitor, Lieutenant Judson. You know that? Yes. I have known all about your past. Your black market activities. Your court martial. Your marriage. A woman uh, must uh, hate or love a man very much if she will go to the ends of the earth to find him. I uh, pity you if it was love that brought you here. It wasn't love. You didn't really think you could charm your way back into my life, did you, Phil? I cried too many tears over you. I'm all cried out. I knew you were just using me to try to save yourself. And you don't think we left that hospital without being followed, do you? They let him take me out of there. They'll be here before you can set foot on deck. I must be slipping, I guess. We're just getting older. set up blockades at all possible points of escape. Notify the authorities in Hong Kong. You may try to cross over there. Surely, Sir Dennis. It's a jungle of ships out there. We could never find him. We can try. We began the almost impossible search through the fleet of great teak deck sampans stretching from the harbor to the horizon. Some of them armed like 19th century men of war. It was as though we had turned back the pages of history and come upon a fleet of ancient pirate ships. We picked up Fu Manchu's trail. It led us along Macau's waterfront to Barrier Gate. There, the trail ended. Fu Manchu had already passed through and had been swallowed up by the teeming millions of people which make up Red China. I'm sorry the way things ended up for you, Mrs. Judson. But if it is of any consolation to you, we have been able to smash Dr. Fu Manchu's smuggling operations here. We have unmasked everyone acting as a blind for him and buying up the shipments of legally imported gold. We have much to thank you for. Excuse me. Yes? Thank you. The plane has landed in the harbor. I have a car waiting outside. You know, Petrie thinks Fu Manchu made one big mistake. Yes, he should have stuck to making those firecrackers. He could have done a real bang-up legitimate business come next Fourth of July. 